Hi everyone. I'm out here going for a walk with my dog. She's, she's way ahead there. I don't know if you can see her. And uh, I figured I'd take this time to, well, tell you all a story. Um, I promised I would tell the, the story of the time I skied up Wildcat Mountain in New Hampshire. It's my, it's my high school sports Hail Mary story. You know, so many, so many people have a story from way back when they were in high school. Those of us who are uh, adults and went to high school way back in the dark ages of, of that incredible pass or that great play that you made or that clutch home run or double that scored three runs and won the champ championship series or whatever. I don't know. Well, my story isn't quite like that. First of all, I didn't play those, those big team sports like football and basketball and, and soccer. I was a distance runner. And in the wintertime, if there was snow, I did Nordic skiing starting in seventh grade. I was on the Nordic team. We didn't have a middle school team back then. We just had a high school team. And so when I was in seventh grade, I joined the high school Nordic ski team. And uh, needless to say, I was not among the fastest on the team. We had uh, um, a bunch of seniors and juniors and freshmen and sophomores. And there was me in seventh grade, skiing along in my waxless classic cross country skis. In fact, it was the middle of the winter and we usually had to travel to go to our, to go to our uh, races quite a ways. We'd have to go up into the mountains. So it would take a couple hours to get there. We'd get out of school early and our race would start just in time to finish before dark. Except if you were like me, the seventh grader on the team, getting passed by literally everybody, um, you came in perhaps a little after the onset of darkness. I remember one time I got passed by all these people. I wasn't even sure if I was going in the right direction. And eventually I got to the finish line and they were actually packing up the finish line. It was getting dark. And, um, and it was one of those kind of embarrassing moments. And, you know, I stepped on the bus and the whole team like cheered for me and it, I didn't want them to. It was just, it was one of those embarrassing things. Anyway, that's not my story. <laughs> that's just, that's just setting the scene. Okay. Ooh, crusty snow. That's, that's just setting the scene. Because by the time I was a senior in high school, I'd been skiing on the Nordic team for my entire, my entire middle school and high school career, except for one season, my junior year, when I smartly predicted that there would be no snow that winter. And there was no snow, and I did winter track. Get off the crust of snow so it's not so noisy. But it was my senior year and I went back to the Nordic team because I just had this premonition that we were going to get a lot of snow and that if I didn't, if I didn't do Nordic, I'd really regret it because that's the sport that I loved the most out of all the sports. There was cross country and spring track and Nordic. And uh, Nordic was the one I loved the most. So I joined back for my final season, my fifth and final season on the Nordic team, my senior year. And I, I, was, I wasn't like amazing, you know? I was probably our second fastest, second or third fastest skier on the team. And I was there mostly because I loved it. I didn't care too much about competing, but you know, every now and then, Placing in a race was pretty exciting. And so we had, we had home races and away races, even though none of them were home, because where I went to high school was Dover, New Hampshire, in the southeastern part of the state, and we hardly ever had enough snow to ski on in the wintertime. So we went up to Gunstock. Gunstock was our home race, our home race course. And uh, I don't know if any of you have ever been to Gunstock, but there's a downhill a downhill ski place there and they had ski jumps so we had a ski jumping team as well so anytime we had a race at Gunstock it was really exciting because it would end with a jumping competition after we were done with our races we'd go over to the 
into the big jumps and watch watch all the crazy jumpers go soaring into the air and uh, um, so this part of the winter hadn't turned out snow wise quite the way I'd hoped and we didn't have very much snow on the ground and Gunstock didn't have enough snow for us to host a race so we had to relocate to Wildcat Mountain. Wildcat Mountain is a alpine is an alpine place an alpine resort and ski spot and so they set up a Nordic course at the base of Wildcat Mountain and it went it, the, the course went down along the base along all the all the ski lifts and up part of one trail and across a side trail over to another and down that part of that one like a bunny trail and then it went across another side trail and then up a little bit more and then over they'd mapped out this course and we had people that were going to go out and stand in all the important places and tell people whether to go right or to go left or to go straight and uh this particular race was a mass start and all of our, I'd never done a mass start that season and I was kind of excited about it because mass starts, if, you're, if you've ever done Nordic mass starts are a little uh, crazy and often involve people falling down right in the beginning. Um, so we did a mass start. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch hands here. There we go. <laughs> we did a mass start and, uh, and it started out really well. I didn't fall, did my double pulling stretch and got into a nice stride early on and I felt really strong. If anybody's ever done distance running as a sport or done Nordic skiing or, or anything like that, some days just don't work out. Some days you just feel awful, you feel like crap. This was not one of those days. This was a day that just felt fabulous and I felt strong and it was toward the end of the season and I'd been training like all my life for this it seemed and I all of a sudden I found myself in the lead I was in the lead and there were a few people who kind of were passing me and then I'd pass them and I, they'd pass me I was in the lead pack and I didn't usually ski with the lead pack and there were some pretty good skiers in that lead pack from Nashua and uh, Pinkerton and some of the places that usually challenged us for the state championship every year and um, there was a place where we had a person who told us to take a right from the from the base trail. We went start we went up this this hill, and all of a sudden I found myself pulling away from the rest of the crowd. And uh, I was I was actually in first place, which was so rare that never in a Nordic race before had I ever been in first place. And here I was in first place. I had to make sure that I was going the right way. And I turned around to make sure the, the pack was still there and they were, I was leaving the lead pack behind, gaining on them. And I had done a lot of uphill training. I'd done a lot of hill workouts and I had strong legs back in those days. And I just, uh, I, I was on top of the world. And I skied and I skied and I skied and I skied up that mountain past the turnoff where we were supposed to turn right, where we did not have a person standing where they're supposed to stand. And I missed the turnoff and so did everybody else because I led them past the turnoff until the groomed trail turned to not very groomed trail and the top of the lift was there and all of a sudden the snow was deep and I realized there was nowhere else to go and I had led the entire pack of racers all the way up the slope on Wildcat Mountain, whichever, whichever trail it was that we'd gone up, we'd gone all the way to the top. And at that point, we all simultaneously realized that we had missed the turn. And I turned around to see everybody behind me. There's my dog, by the way. She's happily busy trying to dig something up. Everybody behind me was realizing the same thing. And the words that were coming out of their mouths were, were not appropriate to repeat right now. Beginning with familiar letters, I'm sure. And, uh, and some people were laughing. And we're on a, it was a really steep hill. That part of the hill was really steep. And so you have all these Nordic skiers, all these accomplished Nordic skiers on their butts, trying to sit on their skis to like sled down this hill because they were, they were not certain that it would be safe 
to, to ski down this alpine slope on their Nordic skis. The one time, the one time I was in first place and it was a DQ, total disqualification. We had to forfeit that race, <laughs> the home team, the, the, the race which I was going to win, um, we had to forfeit and, and we all lost. And it was partly my fault because I didn't take the turn where I was supposed to take the turn, but, but they didn't have anybody there to tell us. So none of us knew where to turn in the first place. Anyway, that's my Hail Mary story. That's the story of me taking an entire ski team and a bunch of other teams all the way up the top of Wildcat Mountain in New Hampshire on Nordic skis, cross country skis, and sliding down on our butts in, in embarrassment and misery. <laughs> I hope you have a great uh, rest of your vacation, and I will uh, see you on Monday. Bye-bye.